Okay, we're continuing chapter 7 with lecture number 4. And in this lecture, we're going to cover the law of motion and the steady state of the solar growth model. So let's take a look. The first thing we're going to hit is the law of motion. That's the next piece to our puzzle. So here we go. The basic idea behind capital accumulation. All right, now, wait a minute. You're saying, well, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I thought we were talking about law of motion. Now we're into capital accumulation. Well, here's the thing. We can solve every variable in the model in terms of capital. To see that, first of all, what's little y equal? Well, little y equals what? Little f of little k. Little y is a function of little k. What is little i equal to? S times f of little k. So little i is a function of little k. What is little c? Well, it's 1 minus s times f of little k, right? So it's a function of little k. Every single variable in our model that we're interested in, every endogenous variable, so not the exogenous variables like s, which is the savings rate, or script delta, which is the depreciation rate. Those are exogenous and taken as given. Um, all the variables in the model can be, uh, in endogenous variables, can be solved um, to, as a function of capital per worker. So if we understand how capital per worker evolves over time, how it's accumulated or disaccumulated, then we understand how the system works. So here's the basic idea. In capital accumulation, we have two warring parties. Investment, which increases capital, and depreciation, which reduces it. So if we think about it like this, we have capital going up, so k being driven up by s times f of little k, because that's investment. And we have little k being pushed down by delta times k, because that's depreciation. All right, so these two are going together. So if I want to figure out what the change in capital is in any given period, that's going to equal the amount of capital I buy minus the amount of capital I break. Or more generally, that's going to be equal to investment per worker minus break even. So I'm going to say break even investment there because, well, as we get a little more general, it's going to be a little bit more than just capital going away. Sometimes we're going to have spreading effect of capital, but don't worry about that yet. All right, it generally it's investment minus the break even level of investment equals change in capital. And for right now, our break even level investment is the amount of investment we have to um, have to replace the capital that is worn out. So this delta K. So that leads us to the law of motion. This delta K tells me exactly how the system will evolve. Because why? Well, th well, think about it. We've got all this stuff, the solo model, uh, solo model central equation, right? Why is it the central equation? Because K tells me what happens to with uh, output per worker. If I know what little K is, I know what output per worker is. Um, C, I know what, if I know what little K is, I know what consumption per worker is. Uh, I, if I know what little k is, I know what investment per worker is. So if I know what little k is, then I know what all the other variables are. So this one equation, if I can solve this equation somehow, it will tell me what happens with the system. Okay? So this is very important. This is called the law of motion. It governs the behavior of this whole model. Step, final step. This is the final piece. And that is the steady state. So when do we come to some kind of a long-run equilibrium? And what does that really mean? Well, what I think of that meaning is that, well, output per worker basically settles down and becomes constant. Consumption per worker basically settles down and becomes constant. Investment per worker settles down and becomes constant. Well, when is that going to happen? Well, that's going to happen when delta k equals zero, isn't it? 
Because if k is constant, what do I know? Well, let's go back. I, if k is constant, then I know y is constant. If k is constant, then I know c is constant. If k is constant, then I know i is constant, right? If I find the place where the change in k is 0, or k isn't changing, or k is constant, then I have found the steady state or long run equilibrium. So, if there's just enough investment to cover my break even my break even needs for investment, in this case, depreciation, well then delta k equals 0. And once delta k equals 0, our system doesn't have any tendency to move. We won't have any increase in output per worker, we won't have any decrease in output per worker. We won't have any increase in investment per worker, we won't have any decrease in investment per worker. This is what we say is called steady state. And the capital level, little k, that results in delta k equaling 0 is denoted as k star, and it's the steady state level of capital. So let's go ahead and solve for steady state. If we have investment exactly equaling depreciation, then what do we have? Delta k equals 0. In which case, delta y is going to equal what? 0. Delta c is going to equal what? 0. Delta i is going to equal what? 0. How much does output per worker increase in the um, steady state? Answer, trick question, 0. In steady state, it's always going to increase 0. Why? Because, well, it doesn't change. It's in steady state. Oh, and there we go. So let's take a look at this graphically. So what I've plotted here, first of all, is the investment per worker function. And now let's put on top of that our break-even function. So I really recommend that you figure out and you draw this over and over again until you can just draw this from scratch. And I want you to be very, very careful and label it properly. So label everything. All right, we have investment and depreciation. This is actually measured in terms of output per worker. So you can just put little y there. This is measured in terms of capital per worker. So the, the vertical axis is output per worker. The horizontal axis is capital per worker. The straight line here where we have depreciation, that's the break-even function. So that's the break-even level of investment. OK, the, the um, s times f of little k, what is that? That's investment per worker. Now, what happens if we're at k star? Well, depreciation, the amount of capital we tear up every day, we destroy, that wears out, is exactly equal to investment. So what happens to delta k? Delta k is constant, or is 0. So k, when we're at k star, doesn't change. And when it doesn't change, there's no reason for it to move this way or this way, right? We stay fixed right here. It's called steady state. And that's why we call that steady state. So what happens if we're not at steady state? Say we're at this capital rate that's below steady state. Well, what's going on? Well, I know my investment all right, is this much. That's i. And I know that my break even is this much. All right, so that's we'll call that depreciation for right now. We'll put a little one there. Now, notice, which one's bigger? Well, investment is greater than delta k1. So what does that mean? That means that this guy is bigger than this guy, and so what? Well, delta k is greater than 0. If delta k is greater than 0, what's going to happen? Capital is going to go up. And that's exactly what happens. Yep, that's delta k. Delta k here we can obviously see is positive. And so we move in period 2 to k2, which is k1 plus delta k. 
investment is still greater than depreciation. So what do we do? We move up by delta K again. Notice delta K is a little bit smaller in period two than it was in period one. And so in period three, we end up with K3, and so on and so forth until we end up at the steady state. As long as capital per worker is below steady state, investment will exceed depreciation and capital will continue to grow towards K star. Now, on your own, try to figure out what happens if we're above. Say we're over here, call this K4. Well, which one's bigger? There's depreciation. Sorry, wrong delta. There's investment. Which one's bigger? Well, it looks like depreciation's bigger. So what's going to happen? Well, delta K is going to be negative, which means we'll disaccumulate capital. Now, this is an important distinction. The, the building up of capital or capital accumulation is not the same as the um, disaccumulation of capital. When we build up, we're buying new capital. When we're disaccumulating, we're not destroying capital. We're not getting rid of it. What we're doing is we're just letting capital wear out. We're buying less capital than what wears out every year. So we have 10 machines. All right? Four of them wear out every year. We only want to have six machines. So, well, we didn't buy anything. So say we want to have um, eight machines. Well, we let four of them wear out. We buy two. Then we end up with what? A change in capital of negative two, which brings us to eight machines. See, that's the idea. We just allow things to wear out until we get down to the point that we want. Whereas when we're accumulating capital, we really are buying more capital than what's actually wearing out. That is the basics of the solo growth model. I highly recommend that you kind of go through this. Maybe you go through the lectures more than once so that you really know what's going on. Because by the end of your going through this model, you really need to be able to do this. You need to be able to sit down with just a blank piece of paper and write out. First of all, I'll draw out my graph and oh, let me label it. I put capital per worker there, I put output per worker there. Then I need to be able to write my investment function, which is what? That's the savings rate times output per worker. Or I'm sorry, yeah, output per worker, which is, comes from the production function. Then I need to be able to write out, well, output per worker. What's output per worker going to be? That is all right, just little f of little k. All right, what does that equal? That equals little y. Then I need to be able to draw my break even function. In this case, is going to be delta k. Then you need to be able to identify steady state. So I come right here. This is where um, delta K will be zero because my depreciation equals my investment. I come right down to here, and that gives me K star. I come right up to here. The height of the the height of the um, production function is what? That's output per worker. So. That's Y star. Now, I know what Y star is. I know what K star is. I need to know what C star and I star are. So, I star is going to be what? The height of the investment function. That's I star. And C star is going to be what? The difference between investment and output per worker. So, that is C star. And you have to be able to write this out just like that. Okay, we're going to have a simulation um, example where I'll have you play with the parameters a little bit. But to really get this in your head and really be able to answer the test questions and do well in this class, you've got to be able to draw this out. You've got to be able to label all of the um, curves. 
um, because once you can do that, you can answer every question I can possibly throw at you. Okay, we will continue with the next lecture.